Welcome to the e-commerce growth show brought to you by Segmentify. Hi guys, welcome to the e-commerce growth show. Um, we've got a, a fantastic uh, chat today with a lady called um, Aphrodite Malama. Now, Aphrodite uh, is the marketing manager and head of e-commerce uh, in a group that I clearly can't pronounce, but it includes the brands of Mothercare, the Early Learning Center, and the Entertainer in Greece. And she's been part of that business now for 14 years. So we've got some, uh, you know, amazing experience of the journey of uh, uh, bricks and mortar commerce uh, in in Greece, and also obviously the uh, the e-commerce side of things. So. Um, she's been involved in bringing those brands in some respects and developing them in multiple countries, uh, including Greece, Romania, Serbia, Bulgaria, and uh, FY Rom. I need to ask you, Aphrodite. What it's a, it's a North uh, Macedonia. It's um, as you call it, uh, um, Skopje, as we call it. Uh, um, the official name is uh, Firom, and this is why I'm stating like this. I see. <laughs> <That's bad. laughs> so actually, we, we were having a quick chat um, a bit before we went on air about the group, because I didn't realize that this group of companies now in, in Greece includes the entertainer. Um, and obviously, they bought the Early Learning Center. But you guys bought the Early Learning Center before that. And do you want to tell the guys a little bit about what how that evolved? Uh, we use we brought mother in Greece um, in uh, 1987, so a long time uh, yeah. uh, back. Uh, we were one of the first uh, international partners of uh, mother uh, group. Uh -huh. So when in 2007 uh, the mother care bought over the ELC, um, we were um, um, proposed uh, to do the same uh, and to develop the brand of VLC in our territory. And yeah. it was a great opportunity as VLC matches mother care perfectly. Yeah. And uh, we did that. Uh, along the way, mother care decided to sell out the um, ELC brand to the entertainer uh, company. Yeah. And then another great opportunity came ahead of us to develop another brand uh, in the territory, which was the entertainer brand. So yeah. we we moved along with the brand to the new company, which was called the entertainer now. And uh, uh, we got a chance into developing one more uh, brand in our in our territories, uh, which is the entertainer. Yeah. Um, ahead of us, we have a big uh, strategic plan regarding this. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, COVID uh, changed a little bit our plans and our scheduling. Yeah. Uh, but uh, hopefully we will get there, you know, as things seem to stabilize no, totally. regarding the, the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously you've got a tried and tested model that you've already rolled out for the ELC, right? You know, you said you took that from... Of course, yeah, we know, from we know the customers, we know the trends, we know the territory. We yeah. know the bricks and mortars, and uh, luckily for us, we now learning and seem to do well the e-commerce path as well. Yeah, yeah. No, really interesting. We'll dive into that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Um, just before we crack on with the actual kind of topic, um, let's let's roll back to our little icebreaker. Um, so uh, obviously, you know, mother care um, is in the baby business. We just had COVID, uh, so it'd be interesting to find out from you what the state of play is in terms of. Uh, births um during that period is anything interesting trends happened yeah i think uh, especially in greece it was uh, uh, a little bit funny because we are a country that we tend not to have too many babies this is a general problem yeah. and what we've noticed lately is like covid uh, made people stay at home spend yeah. time with their spouses and uh, luckily for us, babies were born during that time. So it's really, really nice to see that during a pandemic, which bears a zero positive message around uh, the fact that we have a pandemic, there is a positive message around the pandemic and the fact that babies were born. And uh, that is very nice to see. Uh, you know, having your stores closed and then you're having a baby boom in the yeah. country. Or it's, yeah. it's, it was very nice to see. No, totally. And did, did you see a, a kind of a, I know we're kind of 
veering off slightly, but did you see a real uh, kind of upward spike then in e-commerce, uh, you know, activity, obviously versus bricks and mortar? Yeah, in terms of e-commerce, we saw a, a big spike in activity, yeah, yeah. but, uh, uh, you know, it's very early on uh, yeah. for us to determine whether this spike was uh, due to the fact that every single store in Greece were, was closed. Yes. So we weren't allowed to go outside. We weren't allowed to visit any stores. And uh, so people were inside the homes and, and houses and they were only allowed to order things through online. Yeah. So that created a huge spike in yeah, yeah, yeah. online activity. Or uh, um, if uh, the new baby arrivals uh, affected this trend. I'm assuming from the subscriptions from different marketing programs and projects that we run, and that we try to, let's say, attract uh, pregnant ladies, you know, us to bring them on on the mother care journey. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that, you know, what we are viewing as um, empirical data is, is something there to explore, but I don't have the statistical data to back it up. Yeah, yeah. So, no, 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 a, a simple view. <laughs> yeah, no, totally, totally. Well, let's, let's dive into the main topic. I mean, clearly, Greece is developing in terms of e-commerce has been um, obviously uh, the heritage is bricks and mortar and you've been a massive part of that in Greece through the brands that you've been involved in over the, the 14 years so far. So we kind of, we've kind of titled it surviving um, as a bricks and mortar brand during the pandemic. Um, so why don't we start with kind of, you know, the, the background of the bricks and mortar side of it and then the landscape in terms of the e-commerce side of things and then and then kind of go from there okay um the fact is the, that we began our e-commerce journey in 2019 june yeah. so when covid hit uh, on march 2020 in greece yeah. um I, to be exact in the 18th of uh, march in 2020 uh, we were only operating our own online store for six months. Yeah. Uh, I, I can imagine that all of our audience uh, being completely familiarized with e-commerce business can simply relate to the fact that we were a newborn <laughs> to, yeah. to make a valorization in, in the e-commerce. Yeah. And uh, as a newborn, uh, we had a lot of things to fix and, you know, to make it better and, yeah. you know, everything. Um, this, uh, this fact was a little bit stressful and difficult for us yeah, because uh, our power was in brick and mortar. Mm. We were able to serve our customers perfectly through our 33 stores all over Greece. Mm. And uh, within one day, we lost every single point of sale that we, yeah. have, we had in the bricks, bricks and mortar, brick and mortar world. Mm -hmm. And we were, uh, the biggest challenge is uh, how can you keep up with a great service and uh, to serve your customers and keep your business alive when the audience you have to serve, the Greek people, are not as familiarized with the e-commerce e procedures as uh, other people in other areas of the world. So you have people familiarized with going into a store, making questions, buying things, placing the orders, and then you have people that wanted to do all these things and having a, a customer care service representative by the phone and um, guiding them through the process. Although the process was simply, our site is not difficult, it's something uh, really ordinary, but the people were not familiarized. So I would say that the biggest challenge was to try to adopt into a new reality, yeah. which has had nothing to do with what, our past experience, and of course, to help people adjust to the new reality and um, develop new skills because Greek people developed new skills during the pandemic. Yeah. Greek customers, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, even ourselves as people working. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, how did you um, talk us through a bit of how you tackled that? I mean, obviously, both from a cultural perspective, but also from a technological perspective. What what were the key things that you had to focus on? Because you would have had a total baptism by fire in a way that obviously you were working on this strategy for e-commerce transformation anyway. Then it's interrupted right. by 
you know, the pandemic in the sense of the bricks and mortar strategies that you had, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you've got to pile in big time into the e-commerce side. How did you grapple with that? And what were the key things that helped you to actually make the most out of that time, really? Uh, the, the first thing that we said is that we need to be agile. We need to work around things and we need to work with whatever we have and each uh, person working in the business. If he or she has uh, any skills regarding the area that we were, let's say, stressed about, uh, we will gonna bring them in. So, you know, what, our stores were closed, uh, obviously, but our people were not, uh, were all healthy. So yeah. moving with technology along, we built a huge customer care division uh, with our uh, sales uh, people from the homes in the safety, yeah. uh, taking calls, um, guiding customers through the e-commerce uh, and everything towards that situation and the problem that I described earlier. Yeah. Uh, then our um, technological data and uh, let's say platform, and we, we managed to enhance it even more day by day as to support the, the great volumes that we had in traffic and you know orders and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, we chose carefully partners, uh, you being one of them, that we will be able to work with and take a lot of work out of our hands and, you know, making things easier and um, simpler for us, you know, as not to have to do too much work ourselves. Um, that was the key strategy meeting uh, behind it. And... Uh, it worked, so we are happy about it. Mm. No, and we will great. see. So, did um, like you said, you pivoted like a sales operation into a customer care operation. You suddenly get all this massive amount of traffic online. Um, and did you? So, you said that a lot of people were ringing you up, what, for help with the e-commerce journey? Mm -hmm. Yes, that that is correct. Because yeah. try to imagine that you have never done an online yeah. order before, yeah, ever in your life. Yeah. And you have a baby in yeah. your home, which is like two months or three months, and you are out of soothers or yeah. bottles or even clothes, and you need to do a, an online order. And then you go online yeah. and you don't know where to put your credit card or how to open an account no. or even how to choose the perfect size, uh, you know, uh, yeah. for your baby. Yeah. Uh, that entailed a, a lot of people uh, speaking through the phone yeah. and a lot of emails. Uh, you know, I, I ordered this and I made a mistake and I want that. Okay. And wow. uh, that's understandable. I think if, yeah. that's, if the only, let's say, um, specification that I can tell about our customers is like, it's not like um, you are a grown up uh, shopping around for yourself. Uh, especially if you are a mother with a newborn, most probably you haven't slept through the night <laughs> and uh, you do not have the patience of finding out things. You simply want to be served and to get the things done uh, quickly and in a correct way for your baby. So that sentiment needed yeah. a, a really, really you know, strong backup in yeah. the way that we try to serve people while being away from our customers mm. that was the key yeah no it's, it's very interesting i mean it's uh it's quite an interesting story because i remember i, I was chatting to a lady uh, a few months ago about the um the uh, the fmcg sector you know the fast moving consumer like food you know supermarkets and stuff like that and she was talking about how obviously there's going to be brand new cohorts of customer that are moving into the e-commerce journey that mm -hmm. may have always been the people that went on foot to the store, bought their stuff, and they haven't got a clue what they're doing. I mean, obviously, she was talking about, you know, old, older people, old age pensions and stuff like that, who um, I think what you've just described there is, is exactly from first hand experience, how you address a brand new cohort of customer from scratch <laughs> with a, 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 a kind of a, a bricks and mortar operation and how you've pivoted that and made it succeed. That's a really cool story. Um, so go, go into the more technological side of things. Obviously, you've got a website. It's getting hammered. 
and you're having this customer success operation kind of behind it to make sure people are you know getting what they need did you have to prioritize any particular technolo technologies that would then you know assist with this operational change or on the site itself you know like i don't know from from a you know from a traffic perspective you know testing to payment gateways to personalization anything was was critical in terms of that um you know surviving like we're saying in, in, in yeah we we had we we did so many changes i cannot yeah. even remember the all of them at the moment uh, yeah uh, to start with uh, we changed within i think three or two days or the whole backup plan of the site in order really? to support the traffic yeah. and uh, then the payment gateway you you mentioned yeah. uh, i think especially during around the time of black friday yeah um so the, there was um, in greece in order to give an idea to um, uh, the audience um there is a, a redirection towards a, a bank in order to do a payment gateway and the system of the banks uh, failed out for, due right. to the traffic yeah, yeah. So we have to work around that as well and then the the, the logistics broke down so every courier um company that ran in greece simply stopped receiving parcels because the traffic was so much they were uh, strategically designed to receive uh, eight times the volume up and they received yeah. a thousand the volume up so wow. yeah. the system really really broke down so we changed yeah. that as well we incorporated taxi drivers into our logistic um, operation in order to deliver the parcels ourselves instead of into delivering them to courier servers that yeah. you know yeah. will be given the parcels so um, another thing that we, in, in terms of working around the site, we implemented with Segmentify. Uh, we changed the widgets into to, to preview the last visited items more often as to enhance the experience, the experience of the new customers. Yeah. So, you know, we had many, many uh, phone calls uh, towards the, uh, I've seen this uh, type of blouse or pair of trousers and I cannot spot it anymore. So, you know, uh, moving around the widgets and um, uh, promoting the items that you last okay. visited, helping, yeah, helped a lot uh, in order to wow. support us through the operational. Um, that's that's pretty you know, cool. I mean, yeah, of the aspect. That's really interesting. So, do you mean that basically almost uh, the incoming phone calls were driving merchandising decisions? You were then driving through Segmentify. Yeah, I mean, cool. if you if you were we were viewing a lot of um, customers and uh, emails stating yeah. that um, I've seen a t-shirt, I've seen a blouse, but uh, you know, can you guide me through? It was a yellow one with uh, a big blue balloon, which you cannot simply understand uh, what the customer is saying most of the time. So it takes a long of time for you to understand and then try, trying to help the customer. Yeah. So we said, okay, if we implement on the widget aspects, the fact that you know all of the widgets will be showing last visited items for the customers, maybe we will drive a uh, traffic of this type of, con of phone calls and emails down. And um, uh, it seemed to have helped. It that's seemed brilliant. To have helped. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense because obviously the website is serving it better. So you're kind of almost using it as feedback to then drive the website to drive the pressure down on the yeah on exactly the exactly. But this um, was this was decision not strategically made. It was day by day. Yes. And uh, you know we were trying to yeah. deal with big volumes, and you know every day something yeah. new came up, and a new decision was made uh, towards to uh, keep yeah. us afloat. I would say. <laughs> yeah. No. Totally. That's really. Um, I was going to say something about. Oh yeah. Um, Talking about highlighting, you know, merchandising decisions, right? Did you get any value out of Trendify? Uh, you, know, the, you know, the insights reports and stuff out of yes, the... Yes, we did. We did get value. We did, uh, especially on... Um, so during the pandemic, customers simply changed completely their habits. Um, right. Some of them were easy to, let's say, predict that they are going to change. For example, we were in closed homes, so most probably the fashion items will be 
no yeah. use of for anyone and the PJs and the, you know, body suits will sky the roof, uh, you know, overnight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, we tend to see other things emerging, like, um, for example, it was quite funny, especially when the weather um, during the summer came up a little bit. Um, yeah. We were, uh, customers were really, really eager to buy sand. Sand, the, we have uh, these uh, five kilos of sand that we sell uh, in order to put inside the toys, um, uh, you know, in yes. the ELC department. So, you know, yeah. they wanted to recreate the uh, the feeling of being outside, inside their homes for their mm -hmm. kids on their verandas or balconies or yards. So yeah. they were buying sand. Or uh, we were seeing items in the search console we, that we implemented with the Segmentify that they were searching for and that we didn't have. So yeah. we, oh, we tried yeah. To, yeah, we try to find these certain items yeah. and we incorporate them into our collection. Yeah. So we managed to, to get some sales out of this procedure brilliant, as well. Brilliant. Yeah, I was going to say, um, uh, that's a really interesting insight, isn't it? Because the, the whole idea of these real-time, um, you know, analysis through the AI, the machine learning that Segmentify is picking up, it just, it must speed up your day no end in terms of you haven't got to try and work this out you know, kind of mm -hmm. retrospectively, you can see it in real time. So you can see which products you're potentially missing out on from the supply. Yeah, side. The, the trickiest part of this is that you have the information that you have, especially during COVID, yeah. in, for the logistics, you had zero support of bringing the products in, you know, yeah. and the world was on a halt. And yeah. then you were trying to figure out how how to take advantage of this data. Yeah, some of them we did with the really good results. Some yeah. of them we weren't able to. Of course, yeah, yeah. But well. you, you can't control the supply chain, right? But at least you've got the information to be able to make you know decisions quickly without having to trawl through data yourself. Uh, that's what I hear a lot of feedback, you know, regularly mm -hmm. that the Trendify insights are just so powerful for an e-commerce team because they haven't got to try and work it all out themselves. We've kind of done it for them you know yeah but yes anyway, that, that's true yeah um, i mean th thanks for that. that's really interesting i mean what about um you know what you think obviously from from your territory's perspective in the brand you're working with um t tell the guys what you think is going to happen coming out of covid or obviously managing covid and moving on from the intensity that's been the last 18 months uh, the fact that the consumer behavior has changed it right. will affect the brick and mortar world as well. Right. So, you know, previous to the COVID, we had the customers completely unaware of, you know, the internet experience of buying things. Yeah. Not, um, uh, we had the experience of people want, wanted to view things, but not to buy completely from online. Yeah. So yes. that is going to affect um, completely um, the type of, uh, you know, how we do business. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that the the key answer uh, to this is segmentation. People will want will want more information yeah. targeted to their needs and wants, uh, and not only through online. Uh, they will want to they will want to have the same experience when when they will visit the stores as well. So uh, I think they will welcome the opportunity of companies. Uh, to recognize them as soon as they get uh, their foot inside the stores yeah. and to serve them and propose them uh, according to their needs and their wishes and stuff like that. Yeah. Which is going to be relatively easy and difficult at the same time because the technology exists. Yeah. Nevertheless, to fully incorporate this technology into physical stores yeah. is not that easy. No, as it is in any, you know, and in, into yeah. um, an online store, for example. No, definitely. I mean, that's an interesting area. I mean, obviously, we are doing a lot of work in that segmentation area now to create and collect those cohorts that you need, you know, as you know, mm -hmm. from, you know, your VIPs to your lapsed customers to your churn risk and all the rest from, of it. From my perspective it's going to become after a few years that the physical stores will be there to offer the experience to the right. customer but you know uh, the actual making of the order or carrying the products into buying things will be through online uh, yeah. if, you, if you it will be 
I, I want to experience the brand. I want to experience what it is to yeah. to select, for example, mother care products or any other brand yeah. uh, through a physical store. Yeah. And once you convince me that your experience and your story is good enough for what I am as a customer, I will yeah. uh, do the yeah. um, the selection on your products through online. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean. I know one one thing. I mean, this is the omni-channel side, the true mm -hmm. omni-channel side. You know, like where, where you're saying you're 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 gathering this information on the online side as the level of traffic continues to increase, and obviously will stay at heightened levels now that these new cohorts of people are used to buying online. Mm -hmm. Then you want to then use that information and bring it into the full 360 customer journey uh, to serve them yes. with experiences, right? What, what, from my point of view, and what I've seen so far uh, in our e-commerce journey, is yeah. that whatever we implement online, it affects greatly our uh, physical stores activity. So, yeah. and I'm not talking about simply the the digital promotion or digital marketing and stuff yeah. like that, which is like its goal to to you yeah. know to affect everything. Yeah. I mean, even if we change the menu into our online store and bring something up. Uh, instead of something else, we will see uh, data coming from the stores affecting the sales of the stores. So yeah. that means that, uh, and it, it can be explained easily if you imagine that before visiting any store, you simply go online and have a look um, on what to see in yeah. the specific store, if there's anything that you would like um, to buy, but you want to have verification of, you know, touching it or trying it on before you do the yeah. purchase. Yeah. Um, and I think yeah. this is why even if we are working in the e-commerce, especially for business that have both worlds, mm -hmm. it is quite crucial strategically to think about the two of them, even if you are affecting one of them. Yeah. If you're doing something for a physical yeah. store, you have to always keep in mind that you have yeah. an online store as well Absolutely. and vice versa. Yeah, I know there's there's a few things um, I'm not totally privy to, actually, because there's so much going on in terms of Segmentify, sort of more enterprise solutions across various territories, including obviously Turkey, the kind of flagship territory that we operate in. But I know that there are solutions incorporating that kind of reversible offline online experience through for example the payment gateway token where i know that i was talking to you about this I've, I've got to put you in touch with the client but where in that window post sale in the bricks and mortar environment um the segmentify engine is actually driving last you know bought alternatives and stuff like that into that token window whilst that person might be still browsing or gone out for a coffee or on their way home even with mm -hmm. for example a text message of a discount of a similar or a um, you know a complementary product to what they've bought, mm -hmm. um, and then there's an, another set of solutions whereby obviously you want the data coming from the offline and the online environment almost to be seamlessly interchanging, right? So you're bringing online uh, data into the offline experience, and then you bring an offline data into the online experience, so that you can make the most out of optimized merchandising from both environments. So for example, if you're from Trendify, you know there are your rock star products, you might want to consider using that data to then drive some of the merchandising in the stores. And then likewise, you might want the offline merchandising success uh, by transaction, for example. To it's be the same logic when you start Thank building you. building an e-commerce um, business. If you have uh, physical stores, you begin to place the data in your uh, site according yeah. to what has been sold better in the physical world. And then yeah. you get started from that point and you get different decisions and changes in the online. At the end of the day, it's the same customer. Whether he comes from uh, an app, from your online store, or visiting a physical store, it's the yeah. same customer, and you cannot, uh, let's say, disregard the fact that you know he saw something on your east or site before yeah. visiting your store, or he saw something in your store, and he expects when he goes uh, at his home to rest. Yeah. Uh, towards the 12 o'clock in the night where the baby is fast asleep yeah. and find the pusher or um, the toy that he saw in a store and buy yeah. from there.
Yeah. So you know everything that is helping towards that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Strategy yeah. and situation is definitely. It's, but it's that, it's I suppose it's that you get to that point where you're talking about these more complex operations between you know very important offline uh, strategies and online, where you need that flexibility of a platform that, for example, can take you know reviews into consideration, can take offline transactional data, can take payment information. Uh, you know, can inject text message into the offline environment or, you know, use the Trendify insights to start driving merchandising in the stores. It's amazing, isn't it, when you start going deeper into these more complex operations, how important it is that platforms can, you know, adapt to that. That's true. That's true. And um, from my point of view, again, because I was um, dealing um, I'm dealing 14 years in a row with the, the marketing side mm. of things. Uh, the, the changes that uh, have been happening for the last, let's say, six years now yeah. are amazing, yeah. are completely transforming the view of things as we know them in the past completely. So, yeah. you know, it, it's another thing to assume and another thing to have the data available for you to prove that you are doing something right or that you are doing something wrong. Yes. And and that's a, a very nice thing to have uh, yeah. in order to do business. No, totally. totally. Well, we could probably talk about all those different, you know, improvements and trends you're seeing in another in another chat, I'm sure. But, um, you know, thank you so much for your time today. If, if the guys want to have a have a chat with you about some of the stuff that you've experienced, you know, in specifically in this kind of offline to online world and, you know, really making online a success. Um, should, should we get the guys just to contact us at Segmentify and, you know, the account managers and so on, then we can put them in touch with you for a chat? That's perfectly fine. I will be more than happy to do so. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. And just as, um, as a, a kind of a finishing off thing I do with my guests, um, not to put you on the spot, obviously, Aphrodite, but um, yeah, if you just want to pull a nugget of wisdom uh, out of your life or your business life or whatever you want to tell the guys as they go on their way, that would be awesome. Uh, I would say that uh, it's one uh, percent that happens. What happens to you or in your business, yeah. and ninety-nine percent the way you deal with it. So yeah. even through a pandemic, I would say that there were opportunities and there were things to learn and to develop. So yeah. it's not what is happening into our lives, it is how we deal with it. So that's my, my piece of wisdom. I love it, I love it. But I will ask you one question off the back of that. I totally agree with that. So our ability to react in the right way to life is absolutely critical. And we probably see it every day, right? But my, my follow-up question that's is, what, yes. how do you actually try and realize that from day to day? What What sort of, things do you rely on to, to actually try and achieve that? Uh, I think the most uh, um, crucial factor is to be positive about things, even yeah. the most no negative ones. Yeah. I mean, um, to give you an example, um, although if you ask any colleague of mine, and even me, uh, to characterize the pandemic period of business, uh, you will get an extremely tired <laughs> feeling out of all of us. But <laughs> nevertheless, it was challenging. Yeah. Uh, we needed to be creative. We needed to be fast. We need to be agile. So you know what? Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, yes, I was tired. Yes, I was stressed about the period. But at the end of the day, I, I got uh, something out of it. So uh, yeah. I um, I wouldn't want to leave the pandemic in order to achieve these kind of skills, but nevertheless, it happened. So I yeah. will make most of it, and that's that's yeah, what totally. I'm say. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm going to take a leaf out of Chris Martin's book. You know, you know Chris Martin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he says, he says, I, I can't remember the song, but he says, uh, basically, don't be a part of the cause, be a part of the cure. That, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Or, or as Michael, Jan, uh, Jackson, Michael Jackson said, a uh, man in the mirror, <laughs> take a look at yourself. Oh yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> well, that's really cool. Thanks so much, Aphrodite. And, um, thank you. No problem. And uh, thanks very much for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you haven't done so already, do uh, chip over to segmentify.com forward slash EGS to sign up just to receive all the, all the vlogs that, that come out. 
Um, if you've got any particular questions, topics, or you want to get involved in the show, uh, you can just ping me anytime at phil at segmentify.com. But uh, just remains for me to say thank you so much for listening and watching again. And thank you so much, Aphrodite, for your time today. I thank you. Greetings from Greece. Yeah. I hope yeah. you have, all of you, a great summer. Yeah, at least we actually do have a warm day today. It's the uh, 23rd of June, so uh, it's about 23 degrees at the moment in the morning. So let's, yeah, let's hope it stays for a little bit. I hope you enjoyed. Yeah, thanks. All right. See you later, guys. Take care and speak to you again soon. God bless.